Happy Father's Day! I'm Yaz and I'm here to let you know about some things coming soon and four ways for you to be part of our church community. The first way is through Next Steps. If you're new or newer here, Next Steps is our process to help you become part of the community here at the house. We have three steps through our Next Steps process. Step one is our open house lunch and that's a time for you to have lunch with some of our team. Step two is mission and values, where we go over the mission, vision, and values and where we're going as a church community. And finally, step three, the house is my home. Here you get to officially make the house your home church. Next week, immediately after service, we are hosting step two, mission and values in the library. We'll have light refreshments as we connect with some of our team here at the house. Please go ahead and register online under our coming soon page. The second way is through groups. Groups exist to help you grow and develop deeper community here at the house. This is our last week of connect group season until the fall. We hope that you have enjoyed this season of groups, short but sweet. While we reset for the fall, we'd love for you to continue building community in one of our year-round groups. Go ahead and head to our groups page to sign up for one today. The third way is through events. Events are our one-time experience to help inspire and encourage our church community. Every marriage can use a tune-up. Join us after church July 21st and August 18th. For more details and to sign up, visit our Coming Soon page. Next Sunday, our kids' ministry is putting on Summer of Fun, where every Sunday will be filled with something different, special, and exciting. To highlight a few, we are having an ice cream social Sunday, capture the flag, and pajama movie and popcorn Sunday. So much for your kids. Get your kids excited by going online and seeing all the details under our coming soon page. The fourth way is through classes. Classes exist to help you learn biblical principles to grow in your faith. We have just started our basic doctrine class on Wednesday nights taught by David Hansen. If you would love to grow in your understanding of the Bible, we would love to encourage you to join us. This class will be available online or in person. This is a collegiate level class that you will benefit greatly from. Go ahead and register online under our coming soon page. Don't forget we'd love for you to stay after to have a hot dog and a dad's root beer to celebrate our dads. That's all for today, now let's go to our message. Hey, welcome to the house. My name is Wes, I'm the lead pastor here. And wherever you're joining us from, just wanna say thanks. Uh, thanks for checking out our channel. Thank you to the friend who sent you this video. And thank you in advance to those of you who are going to send this video to a friend. The only way that we get the message of Jesus and even this message of what we're talking about today out is that if people share it. So just want to say thank you so much in advance for doing that. Hey, if you're here in California, specifically in the Los Angeles region, you got to come check out a service. You can check out thehousela.org for all of our service times, directions, how you can get involved, how you can join a group. If you want to uh, participate in giving, you could do that on that side as well. Check out thehousela.org. Today, we're continuing on this series that we started called Mind Games. Mind Games. Maybe you've been in a relationship where the person that you were in a relationship with played mind games on you, where you had a job where it seemed like your boss or manager was playing mind games with you. We're talking about mind games. And specifically today, we're talking about whose job is it to renew your mind? Whose job is it to change your mind? And unfortunately, I do got to tell you this, it's your job. It's no one else's job and you can make it personal. It's my job to renew my mind. Uh, I've got two young kids. And so from time to time, we'll watch animal shows and Disney's got shows, animal planet. They've all got them. And usually it looks something like this, you know, one animal's grazing. And if you see an animal grazing, you already know that, that, you know, the person filming it isn't just filming to see an animal grazing. They're filming it because most likely there's another animal, a predator nearby that's coming for them. Uh, recently, uh, my wife and I out, uh, outside just our, our kitchen window, there's, there's a light. And we saw these little birds coming up and they're bringing one twig and one twig. Like, oh, it's cute. These little birds, they're coming. They're hanging out at our house. And uh, about a week goes by and that house that we live in now has also become a house for these birds. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't just tear down the nest and just let them go, especially because I saw 
little eggs in this nest. And so now this thing, it's grown and it's grown. So it just started out just some little visitors. Then it turned into a home and then it turned into eggs. And now early this morning, I'm just drinking coffee. It's early in the morning and I open up the window and I hear chirp, 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 all these just little birds, chirp, 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 chirp. The, that picture right there is the same way that thoughts come and they build in your mind. It starts with one little bird. It starts with one little twig. It starts with one little thought that you just kind of leave it there for a week and you keep allowing yourself to think that thought for a week. And then now it's not just that thought. It's a family of thoughts. And then that family of thoughts has given birth to uh, more thoughts. And you're like, how did I just, I thought I was just here having a cup of coffee. How did I become the person on Animal Planet looking out my back, you know, looking out this this window with not just one bird, but now you've got two birds and a family of little birdlings. Like, how did that happen? Your thoughts build your inner world. It's one of the most important things about you. More important than your eye color, your hair color, your height, 6'5", blue eyes, more important than any of that. The most important thing thing about you is the thoughts that you think. Proverbs 23, 7 tells us how powerful our thoughts are. Tells us how powerful your thoughts are. It says this, for as a man thinks in his heart, as you think, so is he. How you think that determines how you is. The famous reformer, uh, Martin Luther, he helped really reform the church around the, around the 1500s. He says this, you cannot keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Thoughts come and thoughts go, but the thoughts that you allow to stay the thoughts that you allow to keep around, the thoughts that you think, oh, that's a cute thought, or that's a good thought, or that's a, okay, it's a har- it's a harmless thought. It's a little bird coming. No one's getting hurt. Well, guess what? That little bird brought another little bird. They fell in love, and now they've got little birdlings, and now you've got lots of birds hanging out outside this window. Why? It all started with one little bird, and the same goes for your thoughts. It all starts with one thought. Martin Luther says, hey, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head. Can't even stop, you know, if you go down to Santa Monica Pier and you're out there with a bagel or you're eating a sandwich like that, those seagulls, I mean, they will pop through. They will snatch up that lunch like there's no tomorrow. You can't stop that from happening per se, like a bird coming by, a bird coming close. But what you can stop is that bird building a nest in your hair. You can't stop all the thoughts that come your way. What if you acted on every thought that came your way? Most of us, uh, we've got a regulator in our mind that says, hey, this thought should be acted on and this thought should not be acted on. Everyone has those crazy thoughts. You're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook or something uh, and uh, you're on TikTok, you know, God rest his soul, maybe it'll be around for another, you know, beyond uh, (laughs) the next couple months. They're scrolling and you see someone on vacation. Happened to me literally today. I see this guy, And he like folds this menu in front of him and then the scene changes and he's in Italy. And then he folds his arms and he's in another country. And then he folds, you know, someone walks in front and goes, and it's all these other countries. And you're going, my goodness, I should live there. I should go to that spot. We all have those thoughts that are kind of fleeting. Most of us have a regulator that goes, nah, I'm not going to go, you know, move to the south of France. I'm not going to go move to Italy. I'm not going to go pack up everything and go to Greece I don't even know where Paraguay is. I can't just tell guys, I'm going to Paraguay. Why? Because I had a thought. I had a thought that just kind of flew over my head. Uh, why'd you quit your job? I just had a thought. Just, dude, I'm done with this place. Can you imagine if you acted on every single thought that you had? If you just owned it. This is the, if I thought it, that means it's real. That means every time that you've woken up in the middle of the night and you're like, did I... Did I hear a noise? Is someone trying to break into my apartment? Is someone trying to break into the house? Is Maybe that's just an LA thing. <laughs> and Every time you wake up, does that mean that that's true? Does it mean every time that you have a jealous thought, does that mean that that's true? Every thought that flies over your head, does that mean that you have to own every single thought?
just because you keep thinking of a thought over and over and over, like, why'd you do it? I just kept thinking about it. And so I just did it. I just, I moved on. I'm going to Paraguay. I'm going to Croatia. I'm going to Sicily. This is, this what? Why? Because I just kept thinking it. Just because you think a thought doesn't mean that you should act on it. It doesn't mean that you should own it. Not every thought should be owned. Not every thought is yours. You can say this. I do not have to agree with every thought that comes my way. I do not have to embrace every thought that comes my way. I do not have to ruminate and go over it again and again in my mind, every thought that comes my way. It is your responsibility what you do with the thoughts that come your way. Those little birds outside my window. It's come with a little twig, come with a little twig, come with a little twig. It's your responsibility. Those birds can come and go, but it's your responsibility if you allow those thoughts to build a nest in your life. Your thoughts are powerful because they build your inner world. They're, they're some of the most powerful things about you. They build your inner world and your inner world determines your outer world. How you are on the inside, guess what? That's eventually going to come out. Your inner world determines your outer world. Remember, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you keep thinking about something, and if you allow that thought to, if you own it, and you ruminate on it, and you go over it again and again and again, it will eventually turn into an action. Sow a thought, reap an action. Means if you plant a thought, it will eventually turn into an action. You sow an action, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. You sow a character, you are going to reap a destiny. Where does it all begin? It all begins in your thinking. It all begins up here in your mind. So you may be asking, hey, Wes, how do I live a faith-filled, God-filled perspective life? How do I not allow the thoughts that come all of our way, how do I not allow those thoughts to build a nest in my mind and to create a family of thoughts that I end up acting out on and that end up becoming the way that I live? How do I do that? How do I walk in a God perspective of life? How do I walk in love? How do I walk in forgiveness and grace? How do I do these things? Three ways that you can respond to the thoughts that come your way. So if you're writing things down, you should write this down, screenshot it, send this to a friend. Number one is when a thought comes your way, you get to decide, am I going to embrace this thought? Am I going to embrace it? Uh, I remember uh, the very first time I had went to New York as an adult. We went uh, one time as a kid. Um, and when I was in my college years, a friend of mine was getting married. And so we go to New York. And I remember I'm used to like a West Coast, uh, just one of those, right? You greet someone, you get this, uh, just like that. If it's formal, you give them a handshake, two or three shakes, look them in the eye. Don't give them, you know, the dead fish, just two, three strong, firm shakes, web to web, boom, or uh, one of those. Go to New York and everyone's like, they embrace and, and I was so caught off guard. I just froze <laughs> because everyone, I'm used to, hey, ah, give me one of them. Ah, yes, we're in this. Ah, and I'm doing this. And while I'm trying to do this, people are like, mwah, mwah. and I just remember I was like, what in the world did I just walk into? People are kissing cheeks. We're not, we're not in Paris, people. We're in New York City. Just give me some of that. Ah, give me some of that, right? You can embrace your thoughts. You can embrace good thoughts. You can embrace bad thoughts. Um, just in the same way that if you see a friend that you haven't seen in a long time, you're like, ah, I don't care how big and burly you are. You know, like, hey, nice to see you. You give them, ah, oh, man, so good. Bah, bah. Just two slaps on the back or you give them like this warm embrace, whatever. You do you, but you embrace them. You can choose to either embrace a thought or not embrace a thought. Embracing a thought looks like this. Like, I like that thought. We really vibed. Just like you would with a friend. Man, I like that thought. We just, we really vibed. It was great. Man, we're feeling it. Man, this is great. You can also not embrace the thought. Like, I'm not really feeling that thought. 
that thought kind of creeped me out. I wasn't really feeling that thought. Did me and this thought just become best friends? Like, I love this thought. What? There's different ways to either embrace or not embrace a thought. Just because a thought sounds good does not mean that it is good. There's lots of thoughts out there in our world right now that they sound good on paper. It sounds good to say it on social media. Like, oh, this. And you can say a thought and it sounds good. But then if someone really plays that thought out to the end, is, is this what you want? No, no, no. I would never do this. Well, that's where that leads. Just because the thought sounds good doesn't mean that it is good. And just because the thought maybe even sounds spiritual, it doesn't mean that it's Bible. It doesn't mean that it's true. Matthew 16, 23 is an example of this. Uh, Jesus tells his disciples, he goes, hey, I'm going to go and suffer. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die on the cross, sins of humanity. It's going to be suffer, suffering. Peter looks at him and goes, oh, not so. Lord, not going to happen. Jesus turns to him in that moment and says this, get away from me, Satan. Now, he's not calling Peter Satan. He's talking to that, that thought that Peter had embraced and allowed to come out of his mouth. He goes, get behind me. No, get out of here. Why? You're a dangerous trap to me. You're seeing things mere, merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Just because something sounds good doesn't mean that it is good and doesn't even mean that it's godly. We often use this phrase uh, to uh, excuse ourselves for bad behavior. We say, well, as long as no one gets hurt, then, you know, this should be okay. Guess what? Sin always hurts someone. It always hurts someone, whether it's you, at self-harm, or it's others. Sin always hurts someone. Just because something sounds good doesn't mean that it is good. So you can embrace. Uh, you can repeat a thought. Uh, have you ever found yourself repeating things that other people have said and you're not sure why? Like recently, uh, there was some stat that I, I found myself repeating. Like, yeah, as we all know. And then one day I was like, Google, do we all know that? Is that really a true stat? Is that really something? I had a friend ask me like, hey, what's that one scripture? And it was something that has been repeated so much that it's like, actually, so we're looking up that that's not in the Bible. Like you can find maybe this verse and this verse, they kind of sound like that. But that phrase, it's not found in the Bible. So when a thought comes your way, you can embrace it, but you can also repeat it. But this can also go in a good way. For instance, God says something about you that is worthy to be repeated. Scripture is worthy to be repeated. Those thoughts that come your way, you come on a Sunday morning, you go to whatever church that you are a part of, and you hear the word of God being preached, that is a thought that's worthy not only to be embraced, but to be repeated. The last way that we can respond to these thoughts is to replace them. You have to determine in advance if you're going to do this. If you're really going to work on, I will take the responsibility to renew my own mind. It's no one else's responsibility to renew your mind. It's your, your responsibility to renew your mind. It's my responsibility to renew mine. You have to, de to determine in advance, I want to think like Jesus. I want to think God's thoughts. I want to think his way. I want to think from his perspective. So then if a thought lines up with the word of God, you have already decided in advance, I'm going to embrace it. But therefore you have also decided in advance, if a thought does not line up with God's word, I must replace it with God's word. You may feel like, ah, I'm just not very valuable. That's a thought that comes your way. You're not valuable. But if you've already determined in your heart, I will think God's way, I want to think God's thoughts, and you take that thought, I'm just not that valuable. I don't bring a lot of value to the team. I don't bring a lot of value to my family. I don't bring a lot of value to, to God, to life, to this earth, any of that. If you've already decided, I want to think like God, that thought passing through the filter of God's word, it doesn't pass. And so what you have to do is you have to replace it. You have to replace that thought of, Actually, no, 
I am dearly loved of the Father. I'm a child of God. That is who I am. I am deeply loved of God. I'm a son or I'm a daughter in whom he is well pleased. I'm blessed. I'm favored of God. What are you doing there? You're taking that thought that wants to come in like a bird and build a nest. Because it's like, hey, where where does, uh, you know, we look at where does self-harm and some of these other things, where, where does all this come from? A lot of it, some of it has medical issues, but a lot of it really comes down to a thought that starts in your mind. Where does depression come from? It's for some people, there's a medical part, but for others, it's a thought that began in their mind and that allowed to grow and develop. We have to make a decision. I will, when those thoughts come, I will replace them with what God says. I know that this may not be a popular opinion, but you can make a decision to replace the thoughts that come your way and replace them with the word of God. Determining in your heart, I will think God's way and I want to think God's thoughts. I refuse to live at a lower level of thinking. I refuse to embrace. Now, if you do these things, if you embrace the good thoughts and not embrace the bad thoughts, if you repeat what God says about you and not repeat the bad stuff, and if you replace the bad thoughts with the word of God, what does that mean? That, it, that means that you are actively taking responsibility to renew your mind. The more that you do this, what it does is it washes your mind from all of the bad and it filters all out all of the bad and you begin to find yourself thinking now what God thinks about you and what God thinks about your world. Clearing up and changing your mind, renewing your mind, is your responsibility and mine, but it is achievable and it is possible. And it all starts with the decision. I want to think like Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for what you're doing today. And thank you for every single friend. God, we choose today. We're only embrace God's thoughts. We will only repeat God's thoughts. And we will only replace negative thinking. We will only replace it with the word of God and what you say about us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friends, thanks so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, again, who we are, what we're about, you can check out thehousela.org. Finally, I have to say thank you uh, to those of you who have generously sponsored and you've made a way not only for this channel to expand and to grow uh, with your sharing, but also with your financial contributions. Uh, we can only do what we do with God's blessing and with your help. And if you'd like to join in that journey, you can check out the housela.org slash give and you can see how you can uh, be a part of what God is doing here as well. God bless and I can't wait to see you back next week as we continue this series on Mind Games. 